England, 1100 AD. Whispers of ambition and treachery tell the tale of Henry I, the youngest son of William the Conqueror. A scholar king who wielded both law and sword, Henry's reign was marked by loss, betrayal, and the heavy price of power. Prepare to enter a world where the fate of a nation rested on the edge of a sword. The death of William I left the throne vacant. Henry seized the moment, crowned king, but faced challenges from his brother Robert, Duke of Normandy. England teetered on the brink of civil war, with Henry determined to secure his power. Follow us as we delve into the annals of history, revealing the man behind the crown. Henry, the youngest son of William the Conqueror, grew up in a world of whispers and intrigue. Bookish and introspective, he learned from his brother's reigns, preparing himself for his own rule. Trained in war and diplomacy, his mind was his greatest weapon. He surrounded himself with scholars, readying for the day he might rule. With William the Conqueror's death, Henry saw his chance. He seized the royal treasury and moved swiftly to secure the baron's support. Robert, far from home, posed a distant threat. Henry promised stability and justice, securing his hold on England. Henry's coronation was swift, he issued a charter of liberties to appease the barons, promising to rule justly, he faced the looming threat of Robert's return. The struggle for power had only just begun. Henry faced the task of uniting a divided kingdom. He consolidated power, reformed the legal system, and centralized justice. Commissioning a new survey of England, he sought to understand and control his realm. Knowledge was power, and Henry wielded both. Henry reformed the legal system, establishing royal courts. His judges, answerable only to the crown, brought uniformity to the land. Rebels were crushed, their lands confiscated. Defiance was met with swift retribution. Henry needed gold to rule effectively. The Exchequer, a revolutionary financial system, was born. Sheriffs presented taxes on a checkered cloth, ensuring meticulous accounting. This financial stability funded Henry's ambitions and transformed governance. Henry's reforms extended to everyday life. He regulated weights, measures, and coinage, ensuring fairness. These acts brought peace and stability, fostering trade and growth. Prosperity took root under a king who served his people's needs. England seemed to enter a golden age under Henry, but dangers loomed, with Robert and other rivals threatening his reign. Henry's hard-won peace faced inevitable tests. The story of Henry I was about to take a dark turn. Henry's love for Matilda of Scotland bridged Saxon and Norman divides. Their bond grew stronger amidst courtly intrigue. Matilda bore Henry an heir, William Adelin. The future seemed secure with a worthy successor. In 1120, Henry prepared to return to England with his son. The white ship, carrying William, set sail amidst excitement. The ship struck a rock, and chaos ensued. William Adelin, heir to the throne, was lost to the depths. News of the tragedy reached Henry like a bolt from the blue. The weight of his loss threatened to crush him. He was reduced to a shell of his former self. His grief was all-consuming, isolating him from the world. The court watched in hushed whispers, unsure how to console their shattered king. A cold fury began to burn within Henry. He had lost more than just a son. He had lost his heir. His thoughts turned to those who might seek to profit from this tragedy. His brother Robert was the most obvious suspect. Had he orchestrated this disaster from his prison cell? Or were there other, more insidious forces at play? The king vowed to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. He would have his revenge, even if it meant tearing his kingdom apart. The White Ship disaster was a turning point in Henry's reign. The shadow of suspicion fell upon his court, poisoning relationships, turning brother against brother. With William Adelin gone, the question of succession loomed large, a specter haunting Henry's every waking moment. He had other children, a legitimate daughter, Matilda, and several illegitimate sons, but none had been groomed for the throne. 
Desperate to secure his legacy, to prevent a power vacuum that could plunge England back into chaos, Henry made a fateful decision. He declared his daughter Matilda his heir. It was a bold move, unprecedented in English history. Never before had a woman ruled in her own right. The barons, steeped in tradition and driven by their own ambitions, bristled at the thought. They saw Matilda as weak, easily manipulated, a pawn in the hands of her future husband. Their loyalty, always conditional, began to waver. To solidify Matilda's claim, Henry forced the barons to swear oaths of allegiance to her. He arranged for her to marry Geoffrey Plantagenet, the young Duke of Anjou, hoping to unite England and Normandy under one banner. But the seeds of discord had been sown. The barons, their pride wounded, their ambitions thwarted, plotted in the shadows. The stage was set for a power struggle that would erupt upon Henry's death, a struggle that would plunge England into a period of anarchy and bloodshed. The death of William Adeline changed Henry. The once vibrant king became withdrawn. The court, once lively and bright, grew somber. The weight of the crown, always heavy, now bore down on him with crushing force. Gone was the youthful energy, the sharp wit, replaced by a weariness that spoke of a man who had seen too much, lost too much. He poured his energy into securing Matilda's claim. The barons, however, were a stubborn lot. They saw a woman on the throne as an affront to their order. They whispered in dark corners, plotting and scheming. Henry, his network of spies ever vigilant, knew of their treachery. He ruled with an iron fist, crushing dissent before it could take root. He was haunted by the ghost of his son. In the quiet hours he saw William's face, heard his laughter echoing through the empty halls. The pain of his loss never truly left him, a constant ache in his heart. He pushed himself harder, driven by a need to secure his legacy, to ensure that William's death had not been in vain. Despite the tragedy, life in its relentless way went on. Henry, ever the pragmatist, continued to rule, to strengthen his kingdom. He oversaw the construction of castles, the codification of laws, the expansion of royal power. Yet a shadow hung over his accomplishments. The question of succession, once seemingly settled, now loomed large. Matilda, now a woman grown, bore the weight of her father's ambition on her shoulders. She was a capable ruler in her own right, intelligent and strong-willed. But she was also a woman in a man's world, surrounded by those who would see her fail. Henry, aware of the challenges she faced, trained her in the arts of governance, preparing her for the day she would inherit his crown. He knew, however, that her path would be fraught with peril. The barons, despite their oaths, were a fickle and ambitious lot. They craved power, and they would not hesitate to seize it if given the chance. Henry, his health failing, understood that he was running out of time to secure his daughter's future. As Henry entered his twilight years, a sense of foreboding settled over the kingdom. The king's grip on power, though still firm, had begun to weaken. His once sharp mind, clouded by age and grief, was not as quick as it once was. His enemies, sensing an opportunity, grew bolder in their defiance. Rumors of rebellion spread like wildfire through the land. The barons, their oaths forgotten, began to gather in secret, their whispers of discontent growing louder with each passing day. They saw in Matilda a weakness, a chance to reclaim the power they had lost under Henry's iron rule. The stage was set for a confrontation, a battle for the very soul of England. Henry, aware of the growing threat, refused to yield. He would not see his kingdom, his life's work, torn apart by the ambitions of greedy men. He summoned his remaining loyal followers, those who had stood by him through years of triumph and tragedy. The old lion, though wounded, was not yet ready to relinquish his prey. In the year 1135, as the leaves began to turn, a hush fell over the kingdom. King Henry, his health failing, embarked on what would be his final journey. He traveled north to his beloved Normandy, the land of his ancestors, perhaps seeking solace in familiar surroundings. He left behind a kingdom on the brink, the fragile peace he had forged over decades threatening to unravel. The court, sensing the end was near, buzzed with anxiety. Matilda, her face pale with worry, stayed by her father's side, her hand never far from his. She knew that the moment he drew his last breath, the fate of England would hang in the balance. Her claim, though legitimate, was fragile, 
dependent on the whims of men who had little respect for a woman's ambition. Henry, aware of the whispers surrounding him, faced his mortality with the same stoic determination that had defined his reign. He summoned his advisors, dictating his final wishes, ensuring that his daughter's claim would be protected. He knew, however, that the true battle would be fought not on parchment, but on the field of battle, where the clang of steel and the cries of dying men would determine the future of his kingdom. The year 1135 waned. Winter's chill settled over the land, mirroring the icy grip of fear that tightened around the heart of Normandy. King Henry, the Lion of England, was fading. Each breath came with an effort, each sunrise a victory against the encroaching darkness. Matilda, her own spirit as steely as her father's ever was, refused to leave his side. She spoke of England, of the peace he had so painstakingly built, of the legacy he would leave behind. Word of Henry's decline spread like wildfire across the channel, reaching the ears of those who had long chafed under his rule. A new era was dawning, an era where loyalty was a fickle mistress, and the throne itself was a prize to be seized by the strongest hand. Death, when it finally came for Henry, did so with a thief's stealth. No grand pronouncements, no final pronouncements of kingly wisdom. One moment the lion's chest rose and fell with labored breath, the next, it was still. Silence descended upon the chamber, heavy and absolute. In that silence, a kingdom held its breath, teetering on the precipice of chaos. Matilda, her composure finally cracking, wept for the father she had lost, for the future that now seemed to slip through her fingers like sand. Her claim to the throne, once seemingly secure, was now as fragile as a spider's web in a hurricane. For while Henry had named her his heir, while he had forced oaths of fealty from his recalcitrant barons, he had underestimated the depths of their ambition, the ease with which their promises would shatter like glass against stone. Henry I, often overlooked in the grand tapestry of English monarchs, stands as a figure both enigmatic and undeniably significant. He is not remembered with the same romanticism as his father, William the Conqueror, nor does he evoke the same tragic pathos as his grandson, Richard the Lionheart. He remains in the popular imagination a king shrouded in shadows, his reign a bridge between the tumultuous Norman conquest and the equally turbulent reign of his successors. Yet to dismiss Henry as a mere placeholder in history is to do him a great disservice. He was a king of contradictions, a man of great intellect and ambition, who could be both ruthless and surprisingly progressive for his time. He was a scholar king who understood the power of law and administration, yet he did not hesitate to wield the sword when necessary to maintain his grip on power. His reign was marked by both periods of relative peace and prosperity, and by bitter conflicts, born of family ambition and the ever-present threat of rebellion. To truly understand Henry we must delve beneath the surface, past the chronicles penned by those who sought to either glorify or vilify him. We must examine the man and his reign within the context of his time, a time when kingship was as much about survival as it was about legacy. Henry, the youngest son, the unlikely king, fought tooth and nail for everything he achieved. He built a kingdom from the ashes of conquest, only to see it teeter on the brink of collapse after his death. In his triumphs and his failures, we see reflected the complexities of power, the enduring allure of ambition, and the fragility of peace. Henry I's legacy is a complex and often contradictory one. He was a king who left an indelible mark on England, shaping its institutions, its laws, and its very sense of itself. Yet he was also a ruler whose actions, however well-intentioned, ultimately contributed to the unraveling of the very order he had striven so hard to create. He was, by all accounts, a man of contradictions. He could be both charming and ruthless, capable of great generosity and shocking cruelty. He was a loving husband and father, yet he did not hesitate to sacrifice the lives of others, even family, in his pursuit of power. He was a man ahead of his time in his vision for a strong and centralized monarchy, yet he failed to grasp the societal forces that would ultimately undermine his best-laid plans. In the grand tapestry of English history, Henry I stands as a pivotal figure, a king whose reign was both a bridge to a new era and a harbinger of the turmoil that lay ahead. He was not a saint, 
nor was he a monster. He was, in the end, a man who wrestled with the weight of his ambition, the burdens of kingship, and the often cruel hand of fate. If you made it this far in the video, I want to say thank you for watching all the way through. I hope you enjoyed delving into the life and legacy of King Henry I. Join me next time as we go over more historical figures that have left a lasting mark on our world. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.